We're so used to seeing cities get destroyed, explosions, aliens. Nothing is impossible in the world of special effects. And we don't just see them in fantasy or action films. Almost all films incorporate elements created digitally to simplify production. Will it be the end of true cinema? The seventh art reduced to binary code? Probably not, because even before cinema started telling stories, it was a visual show full of special effects. This is how history's first special effects started. Optical illusions have always captivated us. Whether there were mirror tricks, magic lanterns, phantasmagorias, the theater was fine, but seeing projection full of colorful images was more fascinating. The first animations were very simple, but they presented the possibility of depicting fantasy. When it was finally possible to capture reality on camera, the first filmmakers used their ingenuity to create new films to fill theater seats. The success of productions were determined by how shocking their images were, which is why it's not surprising that a professional magician would later become the father of special effects. Georges Méliès attended the presentation of the Lumière's great invention and offered them 10,000 francs for a device right there. But the Lumières turned it down. According to them, the movie projector was scientific, and they weren't going to let a magician get hold of one. However, Méliès secured a projector in the United Kingdom. He modified it to turn it into a camera. And voila, his career as a filmmaker began. One day, recording a scene on the street, the camera stopped. And then it started recording again. Upon reviewing this footage, he discovered how in the scut the objects had moved. He discovered the jump cut. In 1895, the jump cut had already horrified spectators by showing the decapitation of Mary, Queen of Scots. But Milias used it to bring his magic tricks to the big screen. He built the first film studio where the effects evolved. Double exposure, composition with mats, miniatures, marionettes. His biggest competitor was the Spaniard, Segundo de Chomón, husband of Julien Mathieu, who worked in Méliès's workshop, coloring the frames of his films by hand. Chomón saw the potential of Méliès's effects and was hired by the French production company Pâté Frères, where he started a career as an expert in stop-motion animation and colorful visual effects. Little by little, films started to tell more complex stories and magic tricks were incorporated in more realistic films. Special effects made it possible to see the action inside a moving train, to recreate the feeling of being drunk, or for Colleen Moore to move her eyes like this. To compose these images, double exposure was used. You had to cover part of the image while recording, rewind, and record just the covered part of the image again. It was a complicated process and required great precision. Until the American Norman Dunn started to use painted glass panels to record two shots at once. The glass shot became the most affordable and effective way to create realistic spaces. This is how cinema finally left the theater stage magic tricks and static shots to take our imagination to places that only exist on screen. Today, we can create characters out of thin air or create impossible scenes using techniques like 3D modeling or motion capture. Cutting edge breakthroughs in technology driven by an obsession that's been around since the origins of the seventh art creating believable images in unbelievable situations.